You're listening to Side by Side with Kathy Wilson. Episode 6, Happy Birthday to Me. There were only a few days left at the Lions Foundation before we would be put to the final test and then graduation. Part of me didn't want the days here to end, and the worry of what lay ahead when I got home was looming on my horizon. Ralph hadn't mentioned any more housekeeping difficulties, but his unease was palpable. Hickory took me to the coffee so that I could pour myself a cup and then brought me to my chair. With my hickory, everything was so simple. There was my chair, so I sat down and sipped the coffee. Charlie brought us out each a plate of pancakes and sausages. Wow, I could eat two breakfasts like this. There was syrup and fruit to make it even better. Greg brought the coffee pot around and refilled our cups. What he said was a total surprise. We got a call from your sister this morning. She told us that it was your birthday today. How many years? I'm 50 today. I would prefer to ignore it. No doubt Nancy was laughing into her orange juice at the cleverness of her sneak attack. My memory flew back to a birthday my dad launched when he gave me a huge bag of Cheetos, a bottle of olives that would last me at least a week, and to top it all, a can of cocktail shrimp. A birthday just doesn't get any better than that. Hickory pressed her nose against my arm, and I realized that this birthday would be at the top of my memory treasures list. Because of my loony Labrador, this was the best birthday of all, bar none. We spent the morning working on traffic checks. Each team would walk down a shady home-filled street, and our instructors drove quickly into driveways directly in front of us. This was to give us the opportunity to experience what often occurs while we are out and about. We need to respond to our dog immediately by following its actions. This usually involves stopping and waiting for the car to pass in front of us. The first time this happened to us, Hickory stopped and crossed in front of me, then pushed me back. Good job, Hickory. Well done. I needed a beer after that one. We spent the afternoon uptown, working on crossing intersections safely and finding our place in the pedestrian traffic. The streets were crowded, and we settled on some benches near a store that sold ice cream cones. It was a warm day for the last day of April, so a cone seemed like a great idea. While I demolished my tree under Hickory's envious scrutiny, a woman came by and started asking me questions. In fact, the whole afternoon had been full of people admiring our dogs and asking about actually using a dog to lead you. I don't know how you do it. I think a cane would do the job a lot better. This observation came from a man who was out walking his lively dog and doing his best to keep the dog from tangling his leash around everything. I answered that it depended on the dog. We were asked about our dog's name, age, and breed. One girl observed that it was really nice of us to help all the blind dogs and give them a walk. She just couldn't understand that it wasn't the dog that was blind. By this time, my cone was gone, and the woman was ready to move along. She turned and informed me that my dog couldn't go to heaven with me. Well, can you imagine that? I guess I don't go there either then. Really, what should I have said? On returning to school, the trainers explained that using a guide dog meant that we would be noticed by everyone and to expect a few delays when going about town. I was in a goldfish bowl that afternoon, and parts of it I didn't like and others I did. I got to hear about a lot of people's dogs, which was nice. I encountered some kind people on the street, and were it not for my dog, I wouldn't have had the opportunity to meet them. It was a total surprise when our dinner turned into a birthday party for me. My class gave me a beautiful sweatshirt with a Labrador embroidered on the front with the name of the school. 
The barbecued spare ribs were delicious and the piece of birthday cake I greedily consumed was a delicious corner piece with lots of icing. Everyone sang happy birthday and I joined in. Hey, Kathy, you don't have to sing. It's your birthday. I didn't pay the least bit of attention. If I couldn't sing on my own birthday, then something was screwy somewhere. I felt Hickory's chin resting on my foot and sang out gleefully, Happy birthday to me. It just couldn't be any better.